Hello YouTubers, uh, Charles here, uh, with a short little video here. Um, Mumbo Jumbo uh, today released a video on uh, 10 useful contraptions, and uh, I have a small update for at least three of them. Now, I may be uh, a little bit known for giant, uh, crazy minecart stations like this 64-track uh, minecart station here. You just uh, right-click the sword and arrow to pick a color and an ore, and then you, uh, you just step on the plate here and get in, uh, which I won't do. Uh, but if you were in there, the minecart would go off, and you would wind up at uh, one of 64 destinations. Oops. Excuse me here while I miss the door completely. Let's... Uh... <laughs> get the view back here. So there's uh, 32 tracks on each side and uh, well, this is all the workings all torn apart but you know sometimes you don't need a complicated station. You're at the end of a line and uh, you just want a simple station. Uh, Mumbo Jumbo showed one off and then uh, right after that, basically you showed an empty cart detector. But uh, while they worked, they were a little complex. This is both a end-of-line minecart station and a empty minecart detector in one. And the entire mechanism, well, it's a cactus, a hopper, a dispenser, one pressure plate... One spot of redstone, one, well actually two redstone torches, although this one could be a lever turned on, and I am using um, four powered tracks, although technically this doesn't need to be a power track, but I mean you're going to want it to be a power track to be pushed off, and then um, five or likely more regular tracks. But this is the entire mechanism. Now, if you were really building this, you wouldn't have this hole here. This hole is just to show, you know, there's really a one spot of redstone dust and one torch. Um, the way this works is basically you step on the plate. The plate activates the dispenser to put a minecart onto this rail. But one tick later... All right, the plate is also powering this spot of redstone, so a tick later, the torch turns off, which turns off the rail, and so the minecart is staying there on the slope. I'm just going to fill this in now, uh, so you can see that. Now you can get in the minecart, and when you do, you get off the plate, and you get sent on your way. Obviously, I have this set up to send you right back. When you come back... The minecart hits the cactus, gets broken, and the, the hopper picks you up. Uh, if you happen to not get in the minecart and you just step off the plate, it doesn't have quite enough velocity to get up to that extra uh, powered rail where it will if you are in it. And so it just returns and gets automatically collected. All of this, you know, puts the minecart right back in the dispenser, so it's all ready to go. Uh, so that is the complete My Simple Station with automatic uh, empty cart detection. You know, there's basically nothing to this. You can uh, then send this line off wherever you want and go crazy. Uh, the other thing he showed off was... Uh, a way to get a pulse out of a, I believe, out of a hopper timer. So, here is basically a hopper timer. You can either get a 50% of the time on, 50% of the time off, just by taking a, uh, a reading out of this uh, redstone block. Uh, I, there we go. You see it will be now on half the time, on off half the time. But if you just put a torch on 
the blocks on the side, as the timer changes, you get a short pulse. You can actually do that out of both sides. Uh, you can actually connect both sides together if you want the pulse twice as often. Come on, move back. There we go. Um, you can do your hopper timer like this. And again, it's just the torches on the blocks. Any second now. There we go. So that's how you get short pulses without needing a uh, hopper dropper monostable circuit with a uh, comparator reading the dropper. You can also get an inverse pulse uh, by doing something like this. This is always powered except for the moment that the redstone block is actually moving. There we go. It flicks off for exactly one tick. Um, I'm not sure why we'd want that. Um, I'm not... Let's uh, quickly get a redstone. You'll then, you know, can turn that into a a pulse using a redstone torch. Uh, but in some cases, you need an off tick. And this is how you would get one out of a hopper timer. Um, so those are the uh, improvements. Um... I'm going to link this world. <laughs> this is my basically it's basically my redstone testing world. It's mostly minecart stuff. So you can guess I can uh, I guess you can say it's my minecart testing world. Um Here's my well, I call this my long 64 track station uh because I also have a squat taller well one that's taller but more square uh these are kind of unfinished versions of converting it into a 512 line minecart station not that you'd ever build something like this in survival um this can be improved uh i have some videos on that uh but basically you start at the bottom it would be more efficient if you start near the top and fell past uh, most of the floors. I guess I'll just give a very brief tour of the rest of this. I've got uh, a design uh, for a slime bar mob farm. Uh, th this is kind of a design for an item moving system that uses uh, hopper mine carts. Um, here's a whole bunch of little tutorial areas for different small stations, um, I guess we start off with end-of-line stations and we go to ones that have two or three ways or four or five or, you know, a few more ways. <coughs> Over here's uh, some designs of my older 30 minecart stations, 30 track stations. Uh, this is a bunch of just testing areas for different switch designs. Here's some alternate station designs. Uh, I got a few rainbow beam machines over here. Uh, here's a version of uh, Mumbo's <laughs> horse race uh, where this one actually transfers the uh, items to the winner's chest. Uh, here's an older 64 track design. Uh, here's some analog switch designs. Here's a 100-track station design. Uh, also a nicely filled-in one. And uh, a design for a number selector. So it works kind of like a, a calculator. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, let's press 2. It shows 2. You get a different output. Um, I then use this in a different 100-track station where you have actually track 17 selected. Or, well, this one is kind of filled in, or partially, the track 39. And uh, finally, here's, yeah, here's the tall, kind of squarish 64-track station 
It has uh, 16 tracks coming out each side, color-coded, and uh, you kind of choose where you want to go up here. Similar thing to 8-way spinners. And uh, here's a different 64-track station. This is, I think, the first 64-track station I designed, but it's rather big, although it is nicely decorated. Uh, here's a wall of 64 tracks, um, again, that uses the same dual spinner selector design. And I said, well, if you can make one wall, why not make four walls and get 256 tracks? Uh, not decorated, but uh, you put that in a nice building. In fact, it has a track uh, down here to bring you up to the uh, top where you choose your uh, station. Over here, I have a... Uh, kind of automatic brewing system uh, that you pick. Each uh, thing here actually has two different uh, possible potions uh, by corrupting, which basically chooses the bottom one. And then you can choose longer or stronger, and in fact it won't let you do both. You see longer turn... Oh, no, we're going to do stronger. If you turn stronger off, all right, it'll do longer. Uh, it can do Splash, and it also can do Lingering, assuming you have 1-9 and Dragon's Breath. The only thing that's not done automatically, uh, I'm still in 1-8, uh, but you'd have to put in the uh, Blaze Powder manually. Otherwise, everything else is done automatically. You fill water bottles here. All the ingredients go in here. You can see this is kind of a decorated one, and... Uh, Lingering potions, or uh, the dragon's breath for lingering potions, would go here. Um, that's pretty much it. I've got a few other uh, kind of automatic enchanting systems here. Changes how many uh, bookcases. This is a different version. And uh, finally, up in the sky, I have a few designs of some airships that I've built. Uh, this one has a whole flower farm, food farm, and uh, animal pens in it, or mostly sheep for colored wool. Uh, this one's all focused on producing food. This is kind of older. Uh, I think I designed this before hoppers were even in the game. And I kind of have a floating castle here as well. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the spawn-in point for this world is uh, actually somewhere in the middle here by that uh, north. Actually, I think that uh, gold block is the uh, world origin. So, uh, Thanks for watching. If you find this interesting, check out some of my other uh, videos on my channel. I used to do a lot more Minecraft. I'm haven't been doing too much recently, although I'm hoping to change that when one nine comes out. I also have uh, a lot of Kerbal Space Program and some Infinifactory. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.